Markets are continuing to keep everybody on their toes. And Michael Saylor has got the VC on his tail. Let's take a look at the story. Um, MicroStrategy chairman uh, Michael Saylor accused of evading $25 million in taxes by D.C. Attorney General. He's got the D.C. Attorney General on his tail, uh, basically claiming Michael Saylor uh, is keeping two residences, one in D.C., one in Florida, to avoid taxes. And he's also filed a claim against the company for uh, perpetrating or facilitating the tax evasion. So they're talking about evading $25 million in district taxes. The lawsuit also names MicroStrategy as a defendant alleging the company conspired to help Saylor evade taxes. The AG office said it's seeking to recover a total sum over $100 million in unpaid taxes and penalties. So I guess what Michael Saylor would say is, it's a better investment to buy Bitcoin than pay your taxes and then wait for the penalties and interest to rack up, sell your Bitcoin and pay it, and I guess you'll come out ahead. So another way to finance Bitcoin purchases, who knows? But we'll see how that comes out. It's alleged. Uh, anybody can accuse anybody of anything, right? Especially the uh, attorney, district attorney. Uh, interesting, though, that they put that out publicly on Twitter. That district attorney uh, puts out public tweets about all the lawsuits they're filing. So interesting times there. And uh, as we continue in the news, Bed Bath & Beyond announces store closures, layoffs, financing to fix the struggling business. We'll see. That was the meme stock of the day here in the last couple of weeks. We will see if they can continue uh, to turn that company around or if it's going to go to zero and the company goes away. Um, on other news, the Fed's Mester sees the benchmark rate above 4% and no cuts, at least through 2023. So the Fed is continuing on their talking points <clears throat> and their stance that inflation is the number one thing and they don't care about recession. They don't care about market devaluations. They want to see the markets decline. They want to see the markets sell off in an orderly fashion. They don't want to see a crash, but they want to see what we're experiencing, which is an orderly repricing and devaluation in the markets. Uh, Mester is a voting member of the Fed. <clears throat> and this year that uh, she sees the benchmark rates rising above 4% in the coming months. That's well above the current rate range of two and a half, two and a quarter to two and a half percent for the Fed funds rate. So that's one of the reasons the market is doing what it did today. It opened up a little bit this morning and then leveled off in the afternoon and ended up selling into the close. And as I always say, you want to watch the momentum into the close. That gives you an indication of what investors are thinking, how they're positioning and what they're feeling. Uh, we'll see how tomorrow looks. Could get a little bounce tomorrow as it's been a lot of down days for the markets. But the Dow up almost 1%, S&P up 0.78, NASDAQ up 0.56. So let's take a look at the charts here. Here's Bitcoin on the hourly kind of bouncing around in this little area here with some long and short liquidations. The big thing for Bitcoin is the monthly close. Everybody's watching the monthly close to see if this is going to turn into a bearish engulfing candle uh, on the monthly close. And if Bitcoin can hold above, well, basically 19.8, 19.7, somewhere in that range, um, then it can avoid this bearish engulfing candle on the monthly close. After three straight months down, one up, are we going to see another three down before uh, we get uh, any kind of a bounce uh, from the initial drop, three months down, two up, three months down, one up, three months down, and then maybe we'll be back off to the races. We'll have to see how that plays out uh, in the long run. And then as we talked about, let's take a look at the markets here. Um, this is the Dow Jones, <coughs> excuse me, continuing on its downward track. And we'll go ahead and put in the daily moving averages as markets have all lost the major moving averages. There's the NASDAQ continuing its trek down and the S&P. If we remove those averages, zoom out a little bit, you can see how the market's kind of working its way down in an orderly controlled fashion. A lot of algorithmic um, formulas at play here. A lot of automated trading going on for these levels. Next big test is coming up to see if these June lows are gonna hold. Uh, so we'll see if the markets are gonna get down there and test that, or if this just becomes uh, a higher low and markets uh, continue. But the probabilities of that are not too good given the current macroeconomic climate with the Fed's position. They haven't started rolling off the balance sheet yet. 
quantitative tightening. Uh, they're going to begin that in September coming next month. September is generally a down month for uh, Bitcoin, as we've looked at in the past. So we'll have to see how all this plays out. So these are the things I'm looking at, and I'll see you on the next video.